All right, buddy. So, uh, what's your name and where are you from for the people that might not already know? Okay, so boom, it's your boy. I'm Joe T. I'm from Springfield, Tennessee, man. And before you even start, I want to say I appreciate this. Hey, I appreciate you as well, my friend. Uh, a good old ten. Dang, I I thought, man, I didn't know you're from Tennessee. This is actually a pleasure, man. This is this is a pleasure for me because I go to Tennessee on a regular basis. Got family out there. I mean, you close to the Chattanooga area or been close oh. to the area? I'm about three and a half. I'm about three and a half from Chattanooga. Hey, how do people look at that town out there, man? Is it kind of like a rougher town or a laid back town? Right, my city? Nah, chat. Oh, we'll talk about your city too, but uh, Chattanooga. Well, my neighborhood, you know, we look at Chattanooga like it's it's kind of laid back. But I I know I know some people out there where I've been locked up with some people from Chattanooga. So the stories I hear from Chattanooga versus what we believe, you know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I get you. I get you. All right. So where are you from out there, man? Springfield, it's kind of Springfield, man. It's really like a Gotham City. It's it's real, it's real small. It's one of them small towns that most you don't hear about it. But if you hear about it, you'll be like, really? I'll let you. Know. It's one of them. It, it, you go through three or four red lights, you know, you through the town. But it's if you stop long enough, you're going to jail. Oh, <laughs> man, I mean, what, is the crime high out there? Yeah, the crime. Yeah, the crime high. I think we done just this year in the first three or four months we had like. Seven or eight killers, and they was all teenagers. It's back to back, back to back. Damn. That's bad. That's one of the main reasons why I left. You know, when I came home, I was I was fixed on not ever going back to my hometown. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you've done uh, some time, obviously, if you're on this channel. Why don't we uh, go ahead and start from the beginning, man? Uh, what led down this uh, dark path? <laughs> I wish I had a I wish I had a definite answer and what led it, but other than you know what I'm saying, this is a product of my environment if you ask me, you know what I'm saying? Like what I grew up in and what was going on, it was going on before me. I just basically followed suit. I was next in line, if you ask me, playing the playing the cards I was there. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, I was already around it though. My mama dated one of the biggest dope boys in the city. You know what I'm saying? After they broke up, you know what I'm saying, my brother turned out to be one of the biggest dope boys in the city. You know what I'm saying, and then I just fell in line with all of it, yeah. selling the problem, you you name it, stealing cars. I just kind of, you know, but that's my my whole community was pretty much like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I just fell in line. It felt like it was just a normal process of things. It most definitely was normal to me. Like I did, I don't like when I go speak at events and stuff, and I'm talking. I always say, you know what I'm saying. To me, I thought that just how everybody was living. That's all I knew. That's all I seen. That's all I was around. Like it yeah. was, it was. You there? Yeah. Can you hear? Okay. Me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You good? It kind of went silent for a second. All right. Uh. Well, let me ask you this, man. It sounds like you've been around some hoods and stuff like that. What about the people that decide to not take that kind of route, man? Are they looked at like uh, outsiders a bit? <laughs> Do they get picked I, on by the street cats? How I, does that roll? Definitely, you know, they if you wasn't in the streets, you know what I'm saying, we we picked on you immediately, you know what I'm saying? And it, come come to find out now, the, the reason we I picked on it, I think it was because they had something that deep down inside I kind of desired and didn't have, and you know what I'm saying? And maybe I'm, I'm able to say that now, but back then I was so locked into the streets, we automatically communicated that as corny, lame, when really that was the, that was really the move. What I was doing was corny and lame, but yeah. We had I had a couple of guys, you know what I'm saying? I went to school with, you know, two two parent home and you know, they had, you know, they had the life. You know what I'm saying? From what I had, they had the life. Like when we went to their house, it was they mama always asked us what did we want to eat and they had the video games and they had all the toys and the bikes, you know, and we picked on them for that. We had a little bit of a lighting issue, ladies and gentlemen. It's all right though. We we changed the environment. Uh <laughs> all right, man. Uh so I broke down a little bit of your youth. I mean, uh, what were the initial charges that sent you uh, to the penitentiary? I'm sure you had some um, juvie stuff before that, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. My initial charges when I went to the penitentiary was a uh, special invaded robbery, special invaded kidnapping, first degree premeditated murder. Then we had three counts of felony murder. People automatically assume when I say felony, three counts of felony murder, they think we killed more people. They think more people died, but it's just somebody lost their life in the commission of the crime, so it automatically ties to felony. That's what felony murder is for everybody who's wondering. And then uh, I had the additional escape charge when I caught after the, I escaped out of the jail. So I had that. Then I had the felony, the felony escape. Well, dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Probably. how much time I, you do all together? I only did. I did ten years. I went in in two thousand. Oh, okay. I got. 
27, 2007. I got out uh, May 23rd, 2017. But see, okay, so boom, look, check this out. We, I go ahead and already answer your next question. See, a lot of people are wondering, well, he must have told on somebody he did this and he did that. How did he only get 10 years for a murder case? First, I want to say this. Murder is the hardest case to prove for most people who don't know. Easiest case to beat. The easiest case to be. People people get way more time for drugs and other stuff than people did. You know what I'm saying? With murder. Yeah. In my situation, what happened was we had dirty cops. The cops were, they did a bunch of stuff they weren't supposed to be doing. And eventually it came out. So, because our first deal, the first deal they offered us was like 22, 25, somewhere up in there. Uh -huh. And then it down. But by this time, you know what I'm saying? We found out all of this extra stuff that they were doing in order to even arrest us. And then it came down to 10. I wasn't even going to take the 10, my guy. I was going to take them to trial. Once we figured out half of this stuff could be thrown out, I was going to take them to trial. The mm -hmm. only reason why I didn't, when I went to court, you know what I'm saying, my lawyer was like, man, listen, they offering you a 12. They, they were offering a 12. I said, tell them, give me an eight. I'll stand and go. He, She came back and she was like, he said, he'll give you a 10 and split the difference. <laughs> Ain't that shit crazy? It's like buying a damn car. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when he said the 10, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I done been through all the stuff I've been through in my life. I asked my lawyer, I was like, who out in the courtroom as far as family? And my lawyer was like, well, ain't none of your family out there. It was just, that, that bothered me a little bit. And I knew if I be, if I be, I knew in myself, if I beat this case and go home, I'm going to go home 10 times worse because of the mindset I already had. So when she said my family wasn't out there, I really got to thinking. I was like, man, you know what? And she told me, she said, Joe, she said, y'all did this. All the other stuff you probably done got away with. She said, 10 years going to more so save your life than probably what you thinking and taking your life. And I signed the 10. I signed the 10. I already had two and a half years on waiting for the waiting for the case. I said, you know, let me go. I signed it and went. 10, I mean, uh, paid attorney? No, no, no. I had a, I had a pro, pro, pro bono. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I had a pro bono. I, I, couldn't, afford, I couldn't afford no lawyer for no murder case. Uh, but I yeah. fired. You know, they first they gave me like I had like three public defenders that I had fired because they wasn't hearing what I was saying. I'm telling them what they did as far as the interrogation. The arrest, I'm telling them and they wouldn't even. I had to fire three attorneys and finally gave me a pro bono. Her name Jody Bell from Nashville, Tennessee. And when I told Jody Bell everything that was happening, she believed me. She went and got all the paperwork, showed everything, and sh before you know it, we were down to ten years. I mean, did you have codes? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, I had. It was four of us. Three, it was me, three other people. Two of them got away. Two of, well, I ain't gonna say they got away. Two of them, you know, what I'm saying they stay witnesses. Yeah. And basically, they got immunity. The other guy, which, uh, which I, I'm, I'm just as guilty. You know, what I'm saying I didn't pull the trigger, but I'm just as guilty. I was the one. You know, what I'm saying I was there. I was involved. But uh, the trigger, the trigger man, he got the same. We both got the same amount of time. Well, I got ten years, and 30 30 percent, and one year for the escape, the eleven year, and and all. And the guy who actually pulled the trigger, you know what I'm saying, he got a 10 years at 35% because he was a second range defender. And he actually, he ended up getting out before me. He got out because I had the escape charge, which made my points high. So I wasn't able to get on a uh, medium or minimum security. I went in and had, I could only get, I think it was 12 days the whole time, 12 days good time the whole time I was down. And as soon as he went in, he was getting 16 days. So he got out like six months before me. Hey, uh he in the feds right now though. He got out on the same mess. He got he in the feds right now, don't you? Damn. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, I mean, everyone has their thing, you know. Uh, you're in the wrong place, wrong time, and hanging with the wrong crowd. You're out now, man. It seems like you're doing all right. Uh, but I hate to jump back into the penitentiary side of things. I mean, were you uh ready for the prison ride? Was it everything that you uh were expecting? Man, this is gonna sound crazy to a lot of people, man. But knowing that I had been in and out of juvie and in and out of jail, like I was, I don't want to say I was comfortable, but it wasn't like I was just, I wasn't scared. I was, of course, I was, I had braced myself, but I was kind of like, it's gonna be like it always have been. I'm gonna mm -hmm. here. Gonna be a lot of people who have been in and out of trouble just like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm affiliated. I'm gonna go in here. You know what I'm saying? As far as affiliation going up. And it's just, I'm gonna fit right on in. I hate to say it like that, but at the time, like that's that's where my mind was at, 18, 19. You know what I'm saying? And then I was kind of bullheaded at the time, so it was like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and do everything. I'm gonna fit right in. There. Okay, so uh, you were a part of an organization before even going to prison. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, that plays uh, a big factor in everything as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, 
You go to prison, you're affiliated with an organization, man. So you got some homeboys, I'm, I'm guessing, as soon as you roll up in there. Uh, was it like that, or was there a time where those cats were testing well, you? Well, well, I say this: I was affiliated, but the process wasn't. I didn't find out that the process wasn't done properly until I got to the prison. <laughs> that's <laughs> why. That's where I was going because a lot of people are exactly like you, man. So uh, let me let me hear. Can you talk about that? No, no. I actually, uh, well, a lot of people had heard about me, and then my daddy was the head of an affiliation at one point in time in prison. So he, he was retired. Okay. And he, he was at the same prison I was going to. So that, that kind of gave me, you know what I'm saying, leverage that my daddy was somebody. You know what I'm saying? So when I walked in, it was like, man, that's Joe T's son. I was automatically embraced, you know what I'm saying, by everybody. Yeah. So when I came to prison, it was like, oh, I'm good, as soon as I walked in the door. And then, you know, they they – did the process the way it was supposed to? They claim it was it should have been done immediately. So, no, I, I came in smooth ride. Like I didn't I didn't get into a fight in prison until probably almost two years. Wow, like I was yeah. <laughs> like I, Where, was I mean, uh, so your dad was in the same prison? Oh yeah, me, my dad, and my brother. My, Holy shit! <laughs> the same prison? Yeah, we was at the, we was all at the same prison together. You know what I'm saying? Kicking uh, it like y'all. I we me and my brother. Well. Before I, when I got there, I was on uh, close security. Close, I was yeah, in the yeah. back. I was on twenty two and two. I think at the time, close. Like okay. I came off. My process was backwards. I went from maximum security to close security to general population. And uh, by the time I got to general population, my daddy had got into some trouble because they found he was selling tobacco at the time. He got caught with some pounds of tobacco, so they was in the process of getting ready to ship him. Mm -hmm. So we only kicked it. Me, my dad, and my brother, we kicked it for maybe like a month or so before they shipped my daddy. When they shipped my dad, I moved my brother in the cell with me. And uh my brother, you know what I'm saying, he was trying to still trip he was still trying to treat me like the little brother. You know what I'm saying? Me and my brother got to fight in the cell. You carry I mean, you're I, trying to carry you man. I almost killed him in there. No. I almost killed him. And it's your full full brother. Same mama saying dad. I beat him up in the I almost killed him man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my brother at the time, you know what I'm saying? I'm I was I was doing time. Penitentiary rules in effect. I'm I'm selling heroin. I got tobacco, I got cell phone, I got every kind of contraband that you can think of. I got extra batteries, extra charges, I got everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing time. Yeah. And my brother got about, he had like six, seven months to go home. And he had, we had the boombox in there. You know what I'm saying? My dad had left the boombox. So we, you know what I'm saying? He playing music super loud during count time, knowing that can cause a search. And we weren't supposed to have the boombox anyway, because we ain't, we ain't been, but it was grandfather then. Yeah, he's tripping. So, yeah, he was tripping, tripping. So I'm telling him, I'm like, look, bro, you need to turn that off. And he was like, man, I do what I want to do. He was like, man, I ain't turning nothing off. So the minute he said that, the only thing I'm thinking is, I got all this stuff in here. I know you ain't going to take no charge. I was like, look, I'm telling you now, if they come in here, then you're going to take every single charge. If you get us searched, you're going to take every charge in here. And he stand up and he was like, man, bro, I ain't taking no charges for nobody. And like I... <laughs> Like I said, like I said in my in my story, dramatic affect me, please. The penitentiary rules is in effect. At this point, you are no, you are not considered my brother. You are a seller. I'm Damn. Treat, I gotta treat you like a seller. I said, man, look, I'm gonna tell you one time. You can turn that off, but you know what I'm saying. This gonna be a problem. And my brother, he he walked up on me. When he walked up on me, I'm looking at him. He looking at me. We looking at each other. And I was like, you want? What are you trying to fight me or something, bro? And he was like, man, bro, you ain't talking about nothing. So I snatched the radio, unplugged it, threw it under the bed. I said, man, don't touch the radio. He reached under the bed and grabbed the radio. He go to plug the, the radio back up, make a long story short. He walked back up on me again, and I told him, I said, listen, this on granddaddy, bro. You walk up on me again, I'm going to beat you up again. He walked up on me, and before you know it, boom, boom, boom. We was, <laughs> he touched everything in himself. And uh, and I had my hair, I had my hand wrapped in his hair. He, he had dreads, and I was smacking him. And I had I had my foot on his neck, and I didn't, I done lost track of time. I done blacked out. Yeah, yeah. Officer done came by doing count. So he done seen it and didn't say nothing. So by the time we done got up, he wiping his face off. He bleeding. They they run in the cell. Get out. You know what I'm saying? And they, they try to charge me with assault. I end up serving a few days in the hole. I get out of the hole. Told my brother he can't come back in the cell with me. Had to move. He moved to the bottom of the hill. I ain't even talked to my brother no more. The whole, the rest of that little time he was there. I think he had like six, seven months now. I ain't even talked to him no more after this. Like, no one got caught up with none of the shit, though? Oh, no, no. I, That's well, good. Well, only thing they did, like, when we went to the hole, only thing they did was have, uh, they had somebody go in and pack our stuff up. They didn't even search yeah. the cell. 
I had everything in the in the Mac, but but now they ain't wing that. I had everything. Only thing I would have cared about is the cell phone because <laughs> listen, that's my lifeline tonight. Yeah, cell phones. But I I like to consider like I didn't have enough time to invest in a in a cell phone. You know what I mean? Uh, three years here, four years there. I don't think I need a cell phone. Would you? Sure. Let me. That's a question I like to ask you, man. If you had three years to do, would you invest in a cell phone? I probably not, cause I, done, you know, what I'm saying I done, I done did. You know, I've been in, and I don't think I would have. Three years, I think I would have done it to, you know, what I'm saying get my man right and get Just on. Get the, the hell up out of there, huh? Yeah, now, 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 had I had some partners or something who would have had a phone, I probably would have just, hey, I need you to phone real quick, boom, got on out the way. I yeah. wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have had my own, now. Nah. Look, see, the reason why it's so crazy to me is, but I've told stories and I've I brought people, uh, stories to people's attention, man, and uh, where family members are right next to each other, father and son in a cell. Well, over here in Virginia, if you're a family member, I mean, you ain't getting housed next to that person. It might right. not even be in the same prison. It's considered like right. some kind of a security risk. Right. Sometimes it might slip through the crack with cousins or something right. like that. But uh, so that wasn't an issue for Tennessee. You asked her to get now, with the... They actually, they encouraged that. Like my dad is like, he, they encouraged family. Right. Like he went to the war. And, I don't know if it was because of my daddy case, but I seen several people, you know what I'm saying? They brothers be at the same prison. Maybe once or twice I might have seen father and son in prison, but my daddy was. No, my, I'm 34. My daddy been locked up 33 years. Like everywhere he been, like he kind of know everybody. So his situation was more so of a, hey, look, warden, you know I've been locked up all my life. You know my sons is in prison, man. If you can, you know what I'm saying. He had yeah, a decent, yeah, a respect kind of thing. Yeah, and they did. You know they did it for him. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's so. a different world. I try to tell people it's a different world in prison, man. And that damn. Uh, warden is the emperor he sees you for 30 years shit you right. might be able to shoot some shots with him you know what i mean <laughs> funny about my daddy's situation the warden that he talked to at the time he used to be an officer he used to bring my dad uh, oh damn my dad yeah he done de-escalated a lot of game wars for him when he was a ceo that he done he became a warden so when he talking to him it sounds like a casual conversation, but really it's more so, you know, I did some solids for you. We did some dirt together, you oh, know. Oh, like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I could, go on, I could go on forever with the, these stories, bro. I'm not going to dig too deep, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to ring the wrong bells, you know? <laughs> yeah. But anyways, anyways, all right. Uh, man, this is. A damn good one, man. A damn good yeah. one. Uh, and I knew it would. I knew it would. I can tell just by your energy, bro. You're going to have a good one. Uh, all right. So, well, back to the family thing. One more question about that. Uh, did you inherit any kind of beefs that your father might have had or, or gained throughout the time? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Like, what I was affiliated with, like, my daddy had a crazy history, too. Uh, and uh, Same organization? Yeah, same organization. Uh, okay. He, it didn't come out later on that my daddy was on paperwork. He was the head of the G's for years, maybe 12, 13 years, until they came out to where you can access people who've been to trial and made statements. Yeah. And by the time that came out, some G's that, you know, it's always some beef amongst organizations, some G's that didn't like him, they decided, man, let me go look him up. And when they went and looked him up, he was on paperwork. And so a big split happened. They let him oh, walk. Oh, shit. Yeah, they, they, a, a big war was about to happen, and they kind of just resolved it by saying, you know, he just walk away, retire without honors, and we'll leave him alone. So by the time I came, and I kind of got favoritism right off the bat, you know what I'm saying, because of my dad. And, you know what I'm saying, I was, even though the process wasn't done right, like I knew I was very knowledgeable of how things supposed to go. So I kind of, I got positions fast. Within the first six months, you know, I had, I was security over the organization. Like, a lot of people didn't like that. I got moved up fast. So, but a lot of people, because of my daddy's old situation, a lot of them try to make it an issue with me. So I, you know, but it, it, it never, it never got to nothing serious. But, you know, I always heard the whispers and, you know, brother them, your daddy, and this, you know, I always got that every now and then. That's crazy, man, because, you know, uh, I like to watch a lot of 
uh, movies and shit like yeah. uh, war or just old combat movies and stuff like that or you know back to Native American days type shit and it's kind of like that man you know their father might have done something maybe a little bit right. dishonorable and the son right. still pays for it through the tribe yeah. and and until he yeah. gains his own honor or whatever the case is uh that's crazy ladies and gentlemen so you know i think that's the reason why my first well <laughs> my second violation is when i was affiliated i got a what they call a six minute no cover where i had to fight three people and one rotating because of something that I had done. I think I more so inherited the violation, what they call it, the violation, because uh, the favoritism I got and who my daddy was, more so than what actually happened. And you know what I'm saying? They they about killed me then. <laughs> Some Oh, so you think possibly yeah, I it would have been a little bit more slack? It would, it, yeah. Uh, same thing with the murder case. I, I, don't, I don't even believe we got in, we really got sentenced for the murder. I think it was, it was more so about the hundred and twenty five thousand dollar case that I got away with more than anything. Cause it was a very wealthy family, you know what I'm saying? It was a very well known family. I think it was more so we're gonna get him for this because we didn't been the actual murder. Well what about uh people that come into Tennessee prison that ain't affiliated, they ain't fitting fitting the criteria of what an inmate kinda looks like. Would you yeah. say that they are gonna become the first victims? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, you got to come with a. You ain't coming in with a certain look or uh, knowing somebody. You they you most definitely gonna get tried. Uh, I can remember a certain. I can remember one situation where, you know, where the politics of when you go to Child Hall, of course, it's, it's politics everywhere in Child Hall. Everybody got their table. Like every affiliation got their table. The neutrals got their table. The the punks got their table. You know what I'm saying? Every, it's certain areas of shit. And I remember some guys that came in. They didn't know nothing about you know the seating arrangements, and they sit at the G's table at the time. And when they sit down, the G's automatically they was aggressive. You know they were talking crazy to them, ready to take their trade, snatching the salt and pepper out of their hand, which I took up for them at the time. But it was more so the it was the look they had. It was it wasn't because they were sitting at the wrong table to me. It was because you you noticed they. You know, they kind of look soft and this, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I've seen it several times. Dudes come in and you can tell when they roll it in their cart, they timid, they kind of scared. And when people, you know, they, it, they smell blood. You come in, they smell blood. You go in the cell before you know it, they walking in the cell with you, asking you, you know, all the, the stuff that they ask you. They taking your stuff, robbing you, probably beating you up. I've seen it a couple of times, but for the most part, sometimes certain affiliations will take up for them, you know, leave them alone. But even that's a that's a strategic move to get you affiliated with them, you know, or either charge you, or either charge you, pay protection, you know, anything a game. Yeah, everything. There you go, bro. <laughs> that's the best way to explain prison. Everything's a damn game, or Every shall I say, uh, a manipulation. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, someone's trying to get something for the most part. Very rarely you got a friend just kicking it, you know, just to kick it. <laughs> nobody on it <laughs> you know uh okay so well, let me ask you this there's this one prison i'll never forget this one prison i went to man and the organizations they were just they were they were hungry they must have been hungry as hell everybody must have been broke or something man but store day yeah. cats went to certain cells mm -hmm. with the bag hey put it in or we're gonna you're done for you know we're, yeah. we're gonna wreck your shit right here and we're gonna take it too Right. Was that one of the tactics that people would do uh, I, in the prisons that you've been around? Oh yeah, I seen it. I seen that a few times. Store day, you know what I'm saying? You got like you you got your, I guess they were you got your weenies or your lanes. You know what I'm saying? They try to they go in the but they family keeping they keeping them stopped. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, broke. You either ain't got nothing to sell. Ain't nobody sending you nothing. You affiliated or you know somebody. And you just feel like you can pick on them because. A lot of them won't fight one on one anyway. Yeah, yeah I see. As a matter of fact, I remember one particular time. As a matter of fact, it was a cell next door to me. Mm -hmm. It was four day. I'm in the cell chilling, and next thing I just hear, doo -doo -doo. you know, normally when you hear that, it's just a fight. Yeah. But I, guy, he get out of whatever was going on. He run out of the cell, and he run to the CO. He tell the CO, he said, "Man, they in there robbing me. They just jumped on me." I look at when I'm looking out of the door. As soon as I look out, I hear the CO say. And then what the hell they got to do with me? They ain't got to do with me. Oh, <laughs> shit. He's and dumb, time, man. By the time the police said that, all the other affiliations was automatically on 
Oh, so you trying to tell, you tell. And now he getting oh, both. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, you get robbed, you got beat up. Now you got to go to PC because they looking at it like you tell it. And like he, had, he hadn't been there maybe one or two days in store. You know what I'm saying? He had got store or whatever it was. And, uh, yeah, I seen it a couple. And it was all based on he ain't had nobody riding with him. He wasn't affiliated. He ain't know nobody yet. You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes, man. That is a revolving story, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, this is yep. more – if you yep. were to ask me on uh, the East Coast and the majority of prisons, this is probably one of the mo more common situations than any. You know, a uh, guy get robbed, run straight to CO, CO, don't do shit. Now he's stuck in, in between three hard spots. Yep. <laughs> Nothing. I'm talking about, I hear him, he said, what's the, what the hell you want me to do? I was like, like yeah. that. And, th and that's why, you know, a lot of people say, fight him, you know? Yeah. At least if you fight him, you, right. won't, you won't have dishonor from everyone that you're going to be having to live with. Right. You know right. what I mean? Uh, would you say that's the best route? Take flight? Man, yeah, you go, yeah, it really is. I, I hate to say that, but you you go, you might well go and stand your ground because, hey, it's like you said, you're going to get the worst end of the stick. You run up out of their cell, they're going to look at you like cow. You tell the police you're going to PC. Yeah. And you and you still, and, and get what? By the time they cuff you to take you to PC to call the officer, the officer is going to let everybody go in your cell and take everything you got. So you're going to lose everything. And, and a lot of them officers, they're going to let you do it because they doing they ate and hit the gate. They don't want no problems. It's, they don't listen. It's people in here with licenses. It's people in here. You know what I'm saying? They got time to do. And a lot of officers just ain't trying to get they put their nose in certain business because they can cause them a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Officers, I seen officers get stabbed for for meddling. What have What about stabbings in, in the prisons you see, man? They gonna get street charges like uh, a lot of on, other places. It depends on the prison you at. That's weird. It, it depends on the prison you at with stabbing and with, with drugs. Like the prison where me, my daddy, and my brother was at, if you get caught with drugs, you, you go to the hole for 30 days. You know what I'm saying? They take some good time for you, take your visitation. But the other prison where me and my daddy, when I went to a, the other prison where me and my daddy were cellmates, when I got engaged to the CO where I was at, they are street charge. Yeah, they're street charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> street, street charge? What did you say you got engaged to the CO? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When I left, <laughs> I'm still cool with him to this day. I'm still cool with him, man. But uh, when I left, when my brother went home, my daddy got me moved again. He got me transferred to the prison where he was at in Northeast. And when I got there, you know, it was so crazy. He, I was supposed to go straight in the cell with him. He was on the bottom of the hill, what they call. They moved me. I went to the top of the hill. And when I went to the top of the hill, my guy, I, they moved me in the cell with a pump. <laughs> like, yeah, look, 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 look. soon as I get off the train, I done rolled the bus for like eight and a half, nine hours. I walk in the cell, I walk in the pod, and I'm walking towards this cell. And you know, all the affiliates, they some people knew me. They were like, Oh, that little Joe, they were like, What cell are you going to? And I told them, and then like, ah. <laughs> everybody turned like, oh, Good man. luck, bro. Good luck. <laughs> It's right there. It's right around the corner. Keep going. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, you might as well go and refuse to sell or go to the hell, or go, or go, to, or go to the hole, bro. I was like, who in here? Oh, shit. It was so crazy. Soon as I say who in here, like, it's a couple of Philly, it's a couple of vice lords, a couple of crips, you know what I'm saying? One Aaron Nation dude I knew, you know what I'm saying? He used to hold stuff for me. And the dude, the punk walked up, and when he walked up, this is what he do. He said, he said, ah, oh, you my new seller? I said, listen, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, check this out. I said, first, you need to go and fix your wrist right now. We need to finish you off. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, because the officer, the officer came over, you know, he walked back. He was like, everything's fine. I'm like, yeah, everything's good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, look, I ain't, I ain't trying to refuse no sale. I really don't want to be in the sale with you. I said, I'm going to the bottom of the hill. In the morning, I said, I'm moving in the cell. I said, my daddy down now. I said, man, I'm finna get in the top rack. I ain't finna unpack my stuff. I'm finna go to sleep. If you good, I'm good. I ain't tripping. I'm gonna come mm -hmm. on. The punk say, the punk say, oh, your dad at this prison? Oh, what, what, who your dad is? Oh, like, here comes the small talk. Here comes the window I, opening. I said, <laughs> the bank game. Yeah, look. <laughs> I said, oh, uh, I said, oh, my pops is Joe T. The punk say, oh, Joe T, your daddy? I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, in my head, I'm thinking, 
hold on, hold on. Pop's done did a lot of time. Please no, Pop. Pop. I said, not, not this one, Pop. Not this one. I said, hold on real quick. What you mean is Joe T my dad? And then so I was like, man, y'all let me holler in my city real quick. Y'all step back real quick. So they walk out the city like, oh, your daddy. He was like, I'm pretty sure you already know. He was like, your daddy got all the compounds. He, he got all the tobacco and some down there. He was like, that's who I buy my stuff from. He was like, you need to call him real quick. I was like, yeah, I need to call him. He put the violation up at me. He was like, tell him, he was like, you know, let me do my thing real quick. I put the, the, the violation up. Uh, he pulled the phone out right there. He he squat. He pulled the phone Stop. out. Man, right there. He canoed man. that jank right out, jank, huh? He washed the phone off, screwed the thing back. He was like, "Oh, here you go." He was like, "Man, Joe T, my guy." He was like, "Man, you call him." He said, "Well, then check this out. Tell him send me a few cups of tobacco up here for letting you call him." Like oh damn! <laughs> Yo, yeah, look. So I give my dad. I I call my dad. And as soon as he picked the phone up, he said, how many cups you need? I said, you need to get me to the bottom of the You need to get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said, man, they told me you was here. I said, you know who I'm in cell with? <laughs> but yeah, he got me. As soon as I woke up in the morning, they was already calling for me. You know, I got up and went went straight to the bottom of the hill. Like, man, cool. you know, yeah. people would never in a million years think shit like this is going down in prison. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you know, you know, they usually got the best spots right in, in inside of the in their body. So you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Even a, lot people, a lot of people talk crazy. I mean, because I ain't gonna, I don't condone that. But some in most prisons, punks running them. I try to tell people, man. You know, some are all right. They all right. You know, but they they they, they good business people. A lot of them gonna keep their word more than most cats in there. And respectful. A lot of them respectful. They respectful. And then when they come to when it come to home stuff, they got the best, the best spots. Shit, go in like a damn yeah. credit credit card swipe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Quicker, but, quicker. Yeah. Got a lot of clout. They got a lot of clout with the with the captains and the gold badges. Like they they make stuff move, man. Yeah, but, and I, I be telling man, some of these cats that got some power for real. Yeah, that's a day they be their damn that be their damn yeah. old ladies. <laughs> so you yeah. better be careful who you talking to. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, exactly. don't, you can't go in there disrespecting anybody of any kind because you never right. know. You just never know. Right. I mean, uh, man, I think if we start another story, I'm just it's just gonna keep on going. So uh, maybe I can have you on for a part two later on down the road. I would like to uh, get the people to know where they can find you, man. I know you got some content jumping. Man, you know I'm everywhere. My Instagram is Baker I I I. You know what I'm saying? My TikTok is J O E T B three. Then my YouTube, of course, is it's just my name, Joe Baker. Facebook is Joe T Baker the third. That's three I three capital I's at the end. You know what I'm saying? I am working on a podcast. Well, I got a podcast. It's called 180. Uh, all of the all of my links is on my YouTube. So you ain't if you trying to just go find me, just go to my YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Go to where my links say you can find me on everything. You know what I'm saying? I go live majority of the times on my TikTok. I'm about to start doing my lives on YouTube. So if you're trying to catch me. Come to my YouTube if you want to check out my book. The some of the stories that I just told, all these stories that I'm talking about there in my book. Go to my website. Uh, it's jtb3.org, and you know what I'm saying that's that's it pretty much it. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna keep everything linked and pinned in the comment section, description, of the video, all of his links uh, to where you can find them. And like I said, man, I definitely would love to have you on for a part two, man, and hear a couple more. Uh, yeah. If if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. But while I got you, let's put a little pressure on them, you know, because I know a lot of your people about to watch. If y'all want to see us sit down instead of a real, I go to Virginia. Y'all yeah. get in the yeah. He's not too far away, ladies and gentlemen. That's actually what we were kind of planning to begin with. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let us know. You want to do a little in person uh interview? Let us know in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. And oh. hey, man, I appreciate you coming on to the show and uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. It seems like you're doing the right thing, you know.